Good evening, Tessitore community! Welcome to TN Inspire! I'm going to tell you a story about my back pain. You're probably wondering why, but I hope to show you how data can reveal unexpected solutions to problems. I've always needed data in my life. Here I am, aged 11, with my tree growing project. <laughs> I'm also a problem solver, so it's probably no surprise that when I'm stuck, I reach for data. I had back pain for a long time, sometimes triggered by obvious reasons like lifting something heavy or sitting badly or an uncomfortable mattress. But sometimes the pain came out of the blue for no reason I could identify. And doctors didn't seem to have any answers. I tried osteopathy, massage, pilates, acupuncture. And sure, they helped relieve the symptoms, but none addressed the cause. And my fragile back started to rule my life. And then I read this book, Healing Back Pain. Its core message is that your brain creates the pain in order to distract you from repressed negative feelings. To recover, I needed to believe that there was nothing physically wrong with my back. Now, believe is a tricky concept for me. After all, I had seen the MRI scans of my back and I knew from experience that it was weak. But what Dr. Sano wrote intrigued me and I examined the facts. Amazingly, 80% of Americans will experience back pain at some point in their lives. That's an epidemic and we really don't know why. A study of MRI scans of people with and without a history of back pain show a wide range of spinal abnormalities. But looking at those scans, you can't tell which people had back pain and which didn't. This is a chart of the distribution of back pain by age, with a clear peak around the 40 to 50 age group. But if back pain is caused by a physical problem, why does it decrease in later years? From examining thousands of patients, Dr. Sarno noticed patterns in the personality traits of those with back pain. Being bad at dealing with pressure and bottling up uncomfortable emotions leads to huge internal stress. And rather than allow those uncomfortable feelings to surface, your subconscious instead creates intense pain as an outlet. Who knew that pain could exist without a physical cause? Alongside events from childhood and stresses of family and work, the major source of internal pressure are the personality traits of perfectionism, wanting to please, and conflict avoidance. And when I read that, I thought, that's me. The magic is that once you understand what's going on, the pain serves no purpose. And with a bit of practice and self-analysis, you can then outwit your brain. It's important to acknowledge that the pain is real, often agonizingly so. But hugely to my surprise, once I'd uncovered what I'd been hiding from, the pain gradually went away. So where's this going? Well, we're back to data again. This time I was examining my own life. And what I found was that when I had my head in the sand about inner conflict, I got a bad back. It really was that simple. One morning I woke in excruciating pain and I said out loud, there is nothing wrong with my back. And a few minutes later, the pain ebbed away, leaving me to wonder what stress I had been internalizing. <laughs> a quick disclaimer, this is not medical advice. If you are in pain, please, please see a doctor to rule out any serious medical problem. <laughs> but data turned out to be my doctor. And I now know that when I'm in pain, I need to examine my stress levels rather than worry about my back. That certainly wasn't the cure that I was expecting. Data helped me accept that my back is healthy and to have confidence in and perhaps even believe this new diagnosis. So why have I shared this with you? Well, the obvious or accepted solution to a problem is not always backed up by data. And by digging a bit deeper, an unexpected answer 
might come to the surface. So that's my data story. What's yours? Thank you.